Welcome to the Woman Face Podcast. On this exciting episode, Jen Ives went down to Brighton to talk to trans pride icon and star of the Channel 4 series, My Trans Summer, Sarah Savage. Please enjoy it. We know you will. Okay, thank you. Enjoy it starting now, LOL. So I'm going to open with this question, okay? Sarah Savage. What is a woman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going down that, we're not going down that road. Uh, that's not what this is about. <laughs> uh, the first question that I like to ask guests is kind of a, a kind of unusual kind of thing that I do is how are you how's how's things going <laughs> i'm going great thanks cool um, yeah had a good day yeah really good day um just pretend like we haven't already talked about that just, just cool yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it'll be fine <laughs> so thank you so much for agreeing to be on woman face um that's what it's called by the way the podcast uh <laughs> I, um i do tell people beforehand that that's what it's called but you're comfortable being on a podcast called Woman, Woman I am Face? I am comfortable being Good. on a podcast called Woman Face. Good. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for letting us film and record here in the Trans Pride Centre. Is that what it's called? This is, yeah. The Trans Pride Centre. Cool. Because I've never been here before. Um, I've been to Brighton. Used to live here nearly a decade ago. We didn't have this then. So tell me a little bit about how this got started, how you guys managed to pull this off, because it's like brilliant. Well, the Trans Pride Centre is the first um, trans community centre mm -hmm. um, in England, and it started. It's amazing in England. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I know that you guys did Trans Pride, and that was like the first of its kind. First of its kind started. outside North America. Mm -hmm. um, no one counts that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, about well during the lockdown actually, um, um, we were filming um, for Trans Pride Online, the Sophie Years, um, and I heard that this place was going to become available. What was it before? Before it was called the Rainbow Hub. Um, oh right, okay. And. I think before that it used to be a fishmonger's. There's a giant freezer downstairs that stinks of fish. That's the that's the line. It starts with fishmongers, then, it, then it's gay, and then it's trans. It's like, that's the order. Of <laughs> okay, cool. So we turfed out the uh, the gays, the ultimate gays, and now we're here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. So like we we. we magically got funding to pay the rent for you know um 18 months okay um and then literally four or five members of the committee who had time we came in here and we cleaned it mm -hmm. and we painted it some really bright um welcoming colors yeah and and we just decided to call it the trans pride center yeah and and it exists and all of, so all of this is kind of like snowballed off of the back of uh, Trans Pride then, I, I guess, which you were instrumental in starting up, right? I, I mean, like, I was one of the six or seven people yeah. who helped start it up. You are a founder. A founder. You were there at the start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, back then, one of the first things we talked about with our plans for the future was to have a physical space. Mm -hmm. um, and it was to have somewhere that, you know, we could have a hub for the community and we yeah. could organise and we could store our stuff. So it's literally a dream come true, this yeah. place. It really is. And with the trans pride thing, like you guys were so ahead of the curve on that. Like when did that start? That was like 10 years ago. 2013. So 2013. yeah, this is our 10th anniversary. Like I know how ahead of the curve you were because I was living here, I think. That, that adds up. I was living here when trans pride started. Mm -hmm. And I had been out a little while at that point, like a couple of years. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I was out a couple of years before that. And just in full transparency, just full honesty, at the time, I was quite insecure. I was quite like trying to fit in, you know? Mm. And I, I remember at the time being like, we don't need that, you know? Like, yeah. honestly, like, I was like, we don't need that. Uh, you know, we're a part of the community already. Like, we've got pride, pride. This is like, you know, I wasn't like going around the street shouting that out, mm -hmm. but that was like my, I had a skepticism for it. And 
I was, I was, I was wrong. I was dead wrong. <laughs> and it didn't take me long to figure it out. But, um, but yeah, I guess I just wanted to to float that out there because I think the way things are going now, especially like how kind of divisive everything is, I think there's more and more need for trans specific events and awareness raising. So I'm just, I just think it's great that you guys stuck with that and went for it and uh, I remember going to a few uh, vigils and stuff around a similar time that I think Trans Pride were at or they had helped put together I remember that like really sort of like changing my perspective on it mm. so. I mean like when I first came when I first transitioned I moved to the UK and I transitioned on the same day where did you move from? Jersey, Jersey. And, you know like, and um, Channel Islands yeah and like I literally met one trans person in my whole life before yeah and you know I, I, I transitioned on that Channel 4 documentary My Trans Summer I've, I've um, got some I've got some, uh, some questions about that. <laughs> we'll get to that we'll get <laughs> yeah, to that we'll get we don't want to go straight in that's why everyone's like dying to hear about that like tell me about that I'll, I'll hold it back a little bit but yeah, I mean, like that experience taught me the value of, of community, you know, yeah. like, like I, I, I said the T word on, on national television and the trans community still welcomed me and accepted yeah, me, you know, sure, of course, but you're allowed to say it. I mean, on telly, <laughs> I, I think we should be saying it on telly more. We should be actually, yeah. I mean, like we reclaim it. It's our word, you know, tranny, 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 tranny. like you can't say it. <laughs> Trans privilege. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> but no, I, I, you, yeah, like I had a similar experience. Not well, not the same experience. I did not have a similar experience to you. Uh, I take that back. I, you, have, you had a very unique experience coming into the trans world, I suppose. Be, you know, doing it in front of the nation essentially is something that I don't think most trans people, let alone most people, can really kind of like comprehend that before we get into that though i guess where i think it's similar is that i didn't start transitioning here in brighton um which is like the you know it's like stereotypically the safe haven place to be mm -hmm. if you're lgbt which i am not a hundred percent i mean like don't get me wrong like it, there's no doubt it's a very queer place but it's not without its problems as well mm -hmm. you know I, I always think like people underplay sometimes like that hate crimes still happen here things still happen here blah, blah, blah. Mm. um but i transitioned in london started transitioning in london and south london and it it for me too was difficult and when i came here i didn't really know where to go what to do who to meet whatever i actually went to a trans uh like group it was literally just around the corner from here. Like oh, the Claire Project. But it was, this was just like a this was just a meeting, like a daytime meeting. It felt a little bit like like Alcoholics Anonymous. That was like the vibe of Trans it. Trans Anonymous. Honestly, <laughs> it was, and it really and, and there's no shade to them because they probably were doing amazing work. But we were all like sitting in a circle and talking about quite heavy stuff, and it just didn't have the vibes, you know. So yeah. I was like, the, and everyone there was quite significantly older than me which is fine but at the time I was like this isn't for me so it took me quite a while to find my group here but I did and uh, yeah I'm just I guess just relaying a personal experience did you have a similar experience when you came to Brighton did you did you fit in okay did you like find I did people? have but a similar had, experience oh you did yeah I mean I yeah I too went to a, um, a support group mm. um, and I found that I, I didn't really connect with anyone there, you know. Sure. And, and again, that's not a judgment against against the, the, the group. It's just it wasn't a fit for me. Yeah. Um, no, the Claire Project is scum. Like, they, they're, really, they're awful. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. They're the worst. <laughs> what they care about is dinner. That's, that's, that's what I remember. I was there, like, oh, we're going to go out for dinner. There's other things. Go on, let's, let's have a protest. And I'm like, oh, we want to have food. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like what, what, like trans pride was my community, you know, yeah. um, you know, I tried to, to find a few things to, to fit into. Sure. Um, and it, and it turned out that, that the people who we set up trans pride with, they became my friends and I'm still sure. friends with them uh, years later. 
you I, I noticed that you referred to the documentary as MTS mm -hmm. right? and you said I think you said my summer my trans summer my trans summer now that wasn't the actual title of the documentary mm, when it no. came out the documentary is called my transsexual summer my transsexual summer now I was surprised because I wanted to re-watch it again in preparation for this um, I couldn't find it anywhere it's not on the mm. 4ID or whatever it's called anymore um, I couldn't find a good like mirror like bootleg version of it I could have got someone to download it for me but I couldn't be bothered in the end yeah. I remember it pretty well I think um, but that being said I get why you're why you're doing that you know the, the term transsexual is like so outdated um, I guess what I wanted to talk to you about is that I, I feel like even at the time, actually, the word mm. transsexual was quite outdated. And I remember when I heard about the documentary, I remember being interested about it because the, from the trailers and everything, it looked really positive and really affirming and really joyous, actually. But the title was so jarring that I, it kind of, it didn't, I, I did watch it, but I remember being like, oh, that's like not even, mm. that's, that's not even, we don't even use that phrase now so much. So what were your, tell me a little bit about how they contacted you, how, how, you, how you got involved in it and what that process was like for you and what, we, what were your initial sort of um, feelings about being involved in it? So um, I used to use a, a trans forum, um, a cross-dresser forum, I think it was. Remember the, the, the old school it. days? I, I also was on, I mean, I'm, I'm 33. <laughs> So, I was also forming. Yeah, it was, mm. it was a, a rough. You get some bad advice on those forums. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bad, bad, bad advice from some twisted old queens on those oh, forums. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I saw a message um, and someone had posted, ah, oh, this TV company are looking for people. Yeah. Um, and at the time, I was homeless. Um, mm -hmm. I lived in my car at the beach and um, I sent them a message and I, it was just a picture of me, which was taken at like 6 a.m. after a night out. And, and I was like, this is my name, I'm transitioning, um, would, um, would I be of interest? Um, and so they, there was a few calls back and forth and, and I said, oh, I'm moving to the UK because I had somewhere to go and stay. Um, and they were like, can we come and film you? And then that was it. So can I just ask, so, like, so you were homeless at the time um, you saw this this ad for this thing, but you you had a plan in place already. You you were mm -hmm. going to go and where were you moving to? I was moving to uh, Swansea. To Swansea. Some man off the internet said that I could come and live with really? him. So I was Just like, stranger, okay, yeah, it? yeah. Okay. So what was your personal incentive for replying to that ad to be in this documentary? Did did you think? Did you feel like that was like because 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 it's quite a. You know, because when you start transitioning, it's an incredibly stressful, exposing thing. You know, at your friends, family, everyone, uh, strangers, everything. It's like you feel like all eyes are on you. And I guess I'm just wondering, like, what your personal thought process was in, in terms of like why you replied to that. I was desperate. Yeah. Like, like sure. you know, I didn't have, or I knew that my family would not support me. Um, I knew that they would shun me. Um, I knew that also I didn't want to be, you know, Jersey is so small and, and everybody knows everybody. And I didn't want to be that trans girl, sure. you know, that everyone talked about, um, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> so I decided to go on TV. <laughs> sure, but sometimes like, sometimes, well, they say that like, I'm going to butcher this phrase, but like, what do they say? They say something about light. <laughs> being the best uh, oh, the, uh light uh light as a as, as the best cleaner as, I'm as a not bleach. good with phrases i think <laughs> basically i think the phrase goes going on my transsexual summer is the best way to rip off the band-aid yeah totally is absolutely that what it was? yeah it was okay. it was a way of me like taking control of my narrative yeah. and, and you know grasping the future because i i knew that i was going to be moving to the uk i didn't know virtually anybody over here sure. um 
and, and I thought if it, I, I didn't think it was be, it was going to be as big as it got. Mm. Um, I imagined that if it went badly, then I could just go and live on a beach in Scotland or something, sure. you know, and I could disappear back into obscurity <laughs> in a cave <laughs> <laughs> by the sea. That, uh, yeah, well, okay. Well, I mean, like, yeah, that is amazing, and, and I kind of I, I do understand that. I do understand that that impulse of like ripping the band aid off, and also if you felt like you didn't have any options what a great way to like meet some like-minded people who you could bond with it's kind of crazy to me when i when i look back on it because like i said although the title is jarring and it's not a good title it was it came, that that documentary came out at a time when channel 4 were kind of obsessed with like clickbaity documentary titles there was a yeah. lot of like the boy whose like face fell off and like dogging tails. Dogging tails, yeah. Which that's a good one, I think. That's, oh, that's yeah, the masks title. are excellent. <laughs> yeah. But my transsexual summer, you can, you can. I mean, like, listen. I've met, you know, I, I meet producers. I know these people. I know, these, I know their brains work. They're, they're not good people. Uh, <laughs> they love, they love a, a, they love alliteration, and uh, they probably someone probably wrote that down. My transsexual summer, and they're like. We are geniuses. This is gonna. This is gonna be the uh -huh. best thing. They didn't come up with a name until we'd almost finished all of the shooting. Sneaky, that's I, I think that was deliberate. Um, I bet they did that with Gender Wars as well. Probably, yeah. And I, I didn't sign the contracts until after we'd finished filming as well. Okay. Um, just because I was being awkward, and you know that was the only bit of power that I could grab onto. Sure. You and know? that's so smart. That's that's good. That's good. But and so. Did they pay you for your time? No. They didn't? No. But what I did get, because oh, I, I was- that makes me feel, oh, that makes me feel <laughs> repulsed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so what I did get was, I was, I was you know, really, really poor at the time. Um, and so they, they filled up my car with petrol and we were like, let's drive to here. And then I'd be like, I want to come out to my mum. And they'd fill up my car with petrol, put me in a hotel. Oh, so every time you needed petrol, you could just come out to someone new? Essentially. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got to come out to my, uh, Second uncle twice removed. <laughs> <laughs> Unled it, please. I got, I got a free trip to Devon and one yeah. to Leeds. It's all over the place. <laughs> I, in, in, in all truth, though, I, I do think it's disgusting that you weren't compensated for your time because, it, because, I mean, look, I know these documentary people, they have, like, kind of this, like, journalistic code sometimes where they don't do that, but I think there's a, there's a certain blurred line when it comes to documentaries like this which aren't really i mean they're documentaries but they're sort of not i think putting mm. a group of people in a house and like setting up situations that are like kind of quirky like let's get a shot of everybody putting on makeup in the mirror or whatever like that's that's, <laughs> that's not a documentary is it really no. <laughs> and it's such an exposing thing that yeah like you you should and the situation you were in the fact that there was no one saying well maybe we should compensate this person for doing this and possibly it's that it's a welfare thing isn't it it's like mm. you know what could what ramifications could this film have on this person's life after the fact and should they be compensated for it so i mean it worked out in the end yeah it worked out for me all right but, yeah um yeah yeah absolutely like you know they knew that i was you know um living with a guy who was you know not particularly nice to me and by the end of the filming, um, right at the end of the filming is when I came to Brighton, um, okay. and I ended up being in a, a refuge for nine months yeah. um, because of the situation that I left. Um, and you know, they were aware of it. Um, when I came to Brighton, I think one of the producers paid for me for a hotel for a week out of her own pocket. Was that refuge? Was that Rise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're good. Rise are wonderful. Good Please give your money to Rise. Yeah, I agree. They're a good organisation. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, like, yeah, they exploited me, um, and but I got, in the end, I got you know this life, which I'm very happy with. Sure, and it sounds like it, it does sound to me like you, I mean, you come across so well in it, and you you seem like such a smart person, and it seems like like you said with the contrast and everything, you kind of knew what you were doing to an extent. Um, but I guess the reason why I, I bring it up is because I, I think because of Gender Wars that came out recently, I don't know if you watched it, no, I, I did. Um, 
it's not the same kind of thing but I, I it's just interesting to see how little has changed in the way that well a lot has changed in the way that it's framed but that exploitation is still there mm. and it's just in like a different form and it still to me feels just like a, as gross if not more the, the thing about my transsexual summer uh that is is most impressive to me is just how like i said before how sort of like celebratory it was and i actually can't imagine something like that coming out of channel four today yeah absolutely like it, it was genuinely like pleasure to, to and a joy to do it yeah the people um that i met on the show were were all like you said before really nice people really genuine and and they care about the community um e you know even um the the production crew they were all really cool, cool people you yeah, know like I'm we sure. we hung around a lot and and um did a lot of cool things with them like where we are now in terms of like in my opinion like the best kind of inclusion that like channel 4 do at the moment <laughs> is like you might see us pop up on like first dates mm -hmm. and it'll be like a very sympathetic lens that will be shot on <laughs> and it'll be like i meant metaphoric <laughs> i didn't mean like, like, like vaseline on the front <laughs> but it'd be like um you know like this is uh shanice i don't know why that name came to my head this is a good name this is shanice and uh she's she looks stunning uh, but no one knows if she's actually trans. And then it's like, oh, I don't know if he's going to, what's he going to say? But then he's like, he's drunk and then he's like, I don't care, you're beautiful. And it's like heartwarming. And then at the end it'll say, Shanice and John never saw each other again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shanice was killed shortly after the filming of this. <laughs> Dedicated to Shanice. <laughs> It's so true though, oh my god. It's a nightmare, isn't it? It sucks. Yeah, it yeah, sucks. We, like, like, you know, well, what, there, I, I can name, um, you know, on one, on, on just like that, um, you know, a number of trans, talented trans people who would fit right into presenting shows oh or god, yeah. writing shows, you, you know? You don't have to say my name, it's, it's okay. I mean, you don't have to say You're, you're at the top of the yeah. list, <laughs> Ultimately, that's all this is. This is me just trying to get a job. I, I, you deserve a job. Give Jen a job. She's amazing. <laughs> Give you a job. You're, you're, you're seasoned already. You, you did. I mean. Oh my God. I do this voluntary. Um, all of Trans Pride, I give my time for free and I live in poverty because it's worth it. It's worth yeah. every second. That's lovely. But you should be compensated. <laughs> you yeah, should. I should be. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy because this is the most fulfilling thing. This is the thing that has given me agency. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I love trans pride more than anything in the world. So that's probably why I'm single. <laughs> no, you, should be, you should be really proud of it. It's really great. Tell me about your books. Tell me about. You published like three now, haven't you? Yeah, there's three books now. Yeah. The first one. Um, came out of um, an idea that, that we chatted about uh, during MTS um, and you know there was, there was no children's fairy tale books about trans characters yeah. and so um, Fox and I came up with this idea of a book where we didn't we didn't explicitly say the gender of the main character um, we, yeah, we called them tiny and we used gender neutral pronouns um, and it was called are you a boy or are you a girl and the whole book is just about stereotypes and and gender roles and and is this a male thing is this a female yeah. thing actually no it's both you know yeah um, and it's aimed at, at, at five-year-olds because that's it's <laughs> best age best yeah age it, it is right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean like like the, you teach children about the real world you know and, and real people are gender variant and that's why it's important that we had this book um, I mean, and, and, and at the moment, like, there's such a ridiculous hysteria about about it, about talking to kids about gender or, or gender nonconformity or people. Like, I think the biggest thing about that that's weird to me is that, like, these people are literally sheltering their children from, like, a reality that is inescapable actually. Like they, they, these kids are gonna grow up and they're gonna find out about this and then they're gonna resent you. I mean, I, I had that feeling. Mm, I had a feeling same. resentment about that. 
Yeah, same. Uh, you know, I grew up in a in a um, religious fundamentalist cult. God, you did, didn't you? Why didn't I put that down on my list? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I and and could have got like the Audible series out there. <laughs> it didn't stop me from being <laughs> trans and and no. and you know, uh, pansexual and and everything. You don't have to go into this. I don't have to include this. But do you talk to your parents now at all? Um, no, not at all. Um, the last time I spoke with most of my family, uh, my birth family, was when I came out to them. First thing, I'm so sorry about that. And it's such a such a waste because you're doing so great and you're doing so much good and, you know, trying to be diplomatic here, but they... <laughs> They're stupid. Yeah. Like that's exactly. so so stupid. Like they don't yeah. know what they're missing. Exactly. And, it's, it, and I think you're just a really strong person, and I think all of this is incredible. And I'm glad that I could talk to you about it. So thank you. Yeah, I'm glad that that you came, and and I'm glad that that we've had such an amazing conversation. Yeah. So yeah, it's thank you nice. too. Well, before we wrap it up, I did have one other thing I wanted to ask you. And you have to answer, okay? Okay. You have to, and there's no ifs or buts or like stipulations, it's just you have to give me an answer. You're allowed to think about it though. Who would you rather kiss on the mouth for 20 seconds? Lawrence Fox, Graham Linehan, or Piers Morgan? And, and you have to, like in a closet, you have to do it. Like, like, like gun to my head type, type situation. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a gun, there's several guns, you have to do it. I mean, is, is like Graham Linham holding the gun? No, you, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it, but you have to pick. So who, who, who out of those three would you, would you most prefer to snog? So I, I, I think probably um, um, Graham Linham because... Um, Interesting. I, if we were kissing, I, I could bite his lip. You oh, know? okay. You know, I, 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 I could, I could make it as uncomfortable for for him as it is for me. Okay, um, interesting, interesting. Is there is there anything else built into that? Do you think he's a little bit hot? Well, I mean, I, I, I do like an Irishman, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, before we wrap up, is there anything that you would like to uh, promote or say or uh, talk about? Well, this year is the 10th year, our anniversary of Trans Pride Brighton. Um, we had a disaster last year with our um, financials and our card machines. They stopped working oh, after really? one hour. Um, and our, our lawyers worked out that we lost about £25,000 oh that afternoon. God. And you're still going, though? Still going. That's impressive. So, so like, what happened? Sorry, what happened? Was this, like, in person? You were having the event and then... And then um, after one hour, all of our card machines stopped working. See, this is why cashless society isn't always a good idea. But <laughs> yeah. like, you know, yeah. they did that, start doing that. I don't know if they do it here, but on the buses, in London, it's all cashless. You've got to beep yourself in, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, as, as a uh, response to that, we decided to um, have a, a fundraising gala this year, the night before Trans Pride on the 14th of July. And you're still raising money? For um, that. Still raising money I'll for that. We're selling tickets. Um, um, it's at the Brighton Dome, which is a beautiful historic venue in, in the city. Um, we've got headline, our headliner with Jordan Gray. Oh. Yuck. <laughs> My enemy. <laughs> no, that's fine. I wish her the best. I mean, she won't do a good show, but it's whatever. I mean, if you, if you like not funny comedy. <laughs> I'm just playing. I, I love Jordan. I know. Yeah, that. she's great. And, and we've got um, Dakota Schiffer and Cheddar Gorgeous from Ooh. Drag Race as our compares. Amazing. Um, we've got Bethany Black. Um, sorry, we didn't invite you. I was going to say, it's nice that you've got all of the trans comedians uh, except me. <laughs> I, I, I'm I very actually, sorry. We'll have I you next actually, year. Uh, used to live here in Brighton it's I'm glad that I made such an impact on the scene oh, I'm so sorry <laughs> so I'll let you off your agent didn't respond oh really yeah. <laughs> no I think I think what it is is I think my, my particular brand of comedy is a little bit too highbrow actually oh definitely yeah, it, it would have gone straight above the audience's yeah, heads yeah exactly sorry it's not a funny little song <laughs> Uh, dog or whatever. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, the, the tickets are available now. Um, and then for our Trans Pride Brighton event, we've got the, the protest march, the largest protest march in the UK. Right. Um, that sets off a, a, a midday sharp um, on Saturday morning. Where? Uh, from Jubilee Library. And then we, we march straight along the seafront. We're so visible. We're taking up all the space. Um, and we get to Brunswick Square, where there is a, a, another stage um, and a whole host of, of trans acts, spoken word. We have uh, speeches from community groups. Um, we've got 42 community groups, I believe, this year. It's too many. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a squeeze. It's great. It sounds like a great, uh, great, great time. And, and again, it's, it's just a celebration of, of trans people. You know, the biggest difference between Trans Pride Brighton um, and other traditional prides is that we're not there to educate the, the, the cisgender masses. We're there to provide a space for our community. 100%. We're there to provide connections, um, solidarity and support. And donate to Trans Pride? I mean, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and buy your tickets to go and see Jordan Gray if you want. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's it. That's it. That's everything I had to say. So thank you awesome. so much. Uh, thank you too. Uh, that was great. That was so good. I think that's going to be really good. Yeah, that went really well. So. Oh.